Superficial criticism might raise the following objection. How can an action be individually made to fit the special case and the special situation, and yet at the same time be conceptually determined by pure intuition? This objection confuses the moral motive with the perceptible content of the action. There are four levels of moral motive. Egotism, moral authority, moral insight, and conceptual intuition. The perceptible content can be a motive and is one in the case of the progress of civilization. The perceptible content can be a motive when we act out of egoism, etc. But in action based on pure moral intuition, the perceptible content is never the motive. Of course, my eye takes notice of these perceptual contents, but it does not allow itself to be determined by them. Cognition connects the perceptible content with its concept. The perceptible content is used only to construct a cognitive concept. While the perceptual content is used to construct a cognitive concept, the corresponding moral concept is not derived from the object. Whether you like it or not, you could probably open your fridge and find something healthy to eat. You could find something to eat any time of day whether your parents allow you to eat all the time. Imagine if suddenly it was all gone. If you had no fridge to stand in front of and find a snack in. Tonight, when you go to sleep, your stomach full of the ice cream you just had for dessert. 800 million other people will sleep as well, only they'll be hungry. Every five seconds, a child dies of malnutrition and or of hunger. Now, you may be thinking, why should I care? I'll tell you why. Put yourself in their shoes. Would you not want someone to help you out? Would you not want someone to care enough to send you food? Help make a stand to end world hunger. If everyone in the United States helped make that stand, who knows how many more people would be saved from a terrible death? Why shouldn't you start that movement? The cognitive concept of a given situation facing me is at the same time a moral concept only if my viewpoint is based on a particular moral principle. If I base all my conduct exclusively on the principle of the progress of civilization, then my way through life is tied down in a fixed route.
every event which concerns me, there springs a moral duty to do my bit to ensure that the event furthers the progress of civilization. You don't know his name. You don't know where he lives. But you can see he lives here, lost in an unforgiving world, where one day is the same as the next, a day with no school, no doctor, not much hope. But who cares? He's not your child. Why should you care? Because he is a child and he needs you. When you call Christian Children's Fund, you'll know he has a school to go to. You'll know he'll have a doctor to see so he won't die like thousands of children did last night. Apart from the concept that reveals the natural laws that apply to the event, there is also a moral label attached to the event for me as a moral person with instructions as to how I should conduct myself. You can do this. Children here are dying and they're asking for your help. Today is the day that you can change the life of one child. Please, go now. Go to the phone and call the number on your screen to help a child like Hyatt. At a higher level, these moral labels disappear and my action is determined in each particular instance by my idea, and more particularly by the idea which is suggested to me by the concrete instance. I'm trying to change the conversation about poverty. There's a lot I don't like in the media, both on TV and on the internet, about poverty. For example, as a Canadian, I often would get inundated with commercials like these. They suffer through pain and torment far beyond their years. But who cares? He's not your child. Why should you care? For the price of a cup of coffee. Call the number on your screen right now. Call now. Please, go now. Go to the phone and call the number on your screen. Quite frankly, I think that does a disservice. Anything that makes us feel bad about ourselves or makes us feel guilty doesn't really get us any closer to solving global poverty. Focusing too much on donations really oversimplifies the problem of how to end extreme poverty. And finally, making the poor seem as one-dimensional characters that are worthy of our pity isn't really getting us anywhere. I went around asking what they needed, and everyone started speaking up at once. They all have ideas what they need. Okay. Some students asked for pens, pencils, clothes, and they wanted a blackboard with chalk. They wanted new books and paper. Medicine. 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 Okay. So, Edini, budget, quarter paro. Uh, this so, okay. so. All right, so the director of the NGO that runs the school for the 30 kids gave me a list. In total, they had asked for about $235. Unfortunately, I won't be able to buy them clothes, which is the biggest expense item, over $100. Buying brand new books is unfortunately also a bit over budget, so we're going to have to use older books, at least until such time that, you know, perhaps I could come back again or something. Right now we're in front of a bookstore, we're buying papers, pens, pencils. There are no blackboards available, but the school teachers stress the importance of having a blackboard because she can write down things and students can then see it right in front of them. Right now they don't have anything like that. So we will be paying someone now to make the blackboard. So it takes about 10 days for a blackboard to be made. So that's kind of neat because we're injecting money into the local economy. They have ownership of it. So apparently Mr. Clean makes pens in this country.